get together and worship you, take time out of our schedules, and just sacrifice for you this time and ourselves, and we pray that our hearts will open up to your word. I pray you can speak through me powerfully, boldly, and that I can just uh, talk to the church and help edify the church with your words. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, good morning. My name is Joe Balderas, and I have the privilege of sharing a message with you this morning. Uh, so a little disclaimer, this message is going to maybe step on some people's toes, so I apologize ahead of time, but, uh, and I wrote it on Monday, and after hearing Cody's message last Sunday, it was very impactful. Cody talked about forgiving people, forgiving your brother, forgiving your sister. And after hearing that message, I thought, what does the church, the RGV Christian Church, need to hear? What's going to help them grow? And so I prayed about it, and then Monday morning, it just came to me. So we're going to talk about uh, relationships today. And it's okay. I like, as a speaker, I like to hear amen if you believe something or if you're like, yes, that's my conviction. Amen. So I want to hear amens, and, you know, you can, you can shout out and encourage the speaker. Amen. All right, uh, so this, uh, let me scroll down on my notes here. This topic is actually a training that I went to, and I'm going to be referring to a couple of trainings I went to. And I'm an educator, but within that field, I've been to many trainings. So this one has to do with, with relationships, specifically with critical conversations. And in this training, it was eight hours long, so I hope you packed the lunch or made arrangements. Um, just kidding. I'm going to take the training that was a secular training, and I'm going to root it in Scripture so that we can talk and help one another. So what is a critical conversation? And you can go to the next slide here. I, I don't like using the clicker because I just get help from Jose back there. Thank you, Jose. All right. What is a critical conversation? So it's usually a serious conversation, and it's usually because of hurt feelings. Maybe you hurt someone's feelings or someone hurt your feelings. And we've all been there, right? So we've all felt something like that, where you need to talk to someone because of something that happened. Uh, it's any conversation that can change a relationship. So either it's going to bring you closer after you're done talking and you kind of resolve everything, or it could separate you if you don't get it resolved. And it requires action on both parties. Those are critical conversations. And I think we can all relate. <clears throat> so you'll know you have to have one of these conversations when you won't feel like talking to that person. That's how you know. That's a critical conversation. Maybe they show up at church and you're like, oh, I hope so-and-so is not there. And then you see them and you're like, oh, no, they're here. Maybe they don't know I'm here. I'm just not going to move. And then you see them, and you're like, okay, maybe I saw them. Maybe we won't make eye contact. And then you make eye contact, and you're like, oh, no. And then maybe you actually go and say hi. And you're like, hi, everything's fine. Okay, bye. And then, boom, you run. So maybe you need to have a critical conversation if that's you. So that's been me in the past. Another caveat about this lesson is that I am not an expert in this, and I have not mastered this. I'm not holier than thou. This is actually something that I'm working on myself. So, yes. So I have been uh, humbled by God, and he's telling me, you need to work on this. So, all right. The first point, Jesus is with you. So Jesus is with us. So that should make us feel encouraged. That should help us to feel the love of God. We need to give grace to one another. And when Cody talked about forgiveness last Sunday, I thought, let's kind of dive in a little deeper. Let's get to the nitty-gritty. How, how do we forgive people? So Jesus is with you. Matthew 18, verse 20. You can turn there in your phone or on your Bible. <clears throat> For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. That's quoting Jesus directly. Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Because you need to be bold in these conversations. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 
And that reminds me of God acting like a parent. He's, that's something that I tell my sons. I'm with you. Don't worry. Don't worry who's going to feed you. I'm going to feed you. I'm here for you. John 16, verse 33. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And Jesus tells us over and over that he is with us. And the point of a critical conversation is to have peace. We want to have peace in the church. We want to have peace with one another. You can only have a conversation with your brother and sister if Jesus is with you. So you can't depend on yourself, your self-strength. You have to turn to Jesus. So when I was a young Christian, uh, Luke was talking about, we go way back from college days. So way back, like in 2003, I, was, uh, I, I got baptized in 2001 and then started leading Bible talks, studying the Bible with people. And then things would happen, like uh, somebody, I don't know, wronged me in some way or I was going to lead a Bible talk lesson and I would get really anxious and nervous. But back then, one of my friends would remind me, it's not about you. You're going to preach the word of God. God wrote these words for people to hear. It's not about you. Take yourself out of the equation. And it was good for me to hear. Even now, I'm, I'm turning 40 this year. And even now, like, I'm just learning every time. And uh, other people in my life, they tell me, they remind me, it's not about you. Like, you need to be humble. So that's one of the sub points here. It's not about you. When you have one of these conversations, you shouldn't fear. You can go in feeling bold because Jesus is with you. And it's not about you. It's about having peace and mending the relationship. All right, we can go to the next slide. Forgive each other. Uh, so what I did, instead of putting like eight steps, I just kind of put them together. So this is 1A, forgive each other. First, we need to forgive uh, this person whenever they hurt us. First Peter 4, verse 8 says, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Sometimes people will sin against us. So even in the church, Christians sin, and then sometimes they sin against you, against you and me. That's just something that's going to happen, something that Cody mentioned last Sunday. If you're a friend with someone, sooner or later you're going to bump heads, you're going to hit a bump, you know, you're going to have to resolve some things. And that's just a normal part of having a relationship with someone. But I've also heard uh, Dr. Henry Cloud, he says, whenever you have these bumps, these disagreements, once you work it out and you talk, that builds intimacy so then you're more connected to that person and that's kind of counteractive to what we think we usually try to avoid people but no that's what he says you you have to talk it out and then you build more intimacy amen proverbs 17 verse 9 love prospers when a fault is forgiven but dwelling on it separates close friends so what is forgiveness one of the definitions of forgiveness that i heard this week is that it's when you don't replay it over and over. If you find yourself replaying whatever someone told you that hurt your feelings, if you're replaying it over and over, if you're holding on to it, then you haven't forgiven them. Once you forgive someone of something that they've done or something they've said, you let it go. Kind of like Elsa and Frozen, let it go, let it go. So she's talking about forgiveness in that song. Let it go, let it go. I know, right? <laughs> little Disney song there. Uh, but yeah, it, once you let it go, then you know. Then there's breathing room, there's freedom. That's the freedom Jesus is talking about. Yeah. So that's forgiveness. That's a definition of forgiveness. You just, whew. and then if you have to have a critical conversation, you don't bring things up. It's like, oh, no, I let it go. I don't have to bring that up. I feel, I feel fine. And that's with both parties. In uh, James 5, 16 and 17, it talks about uh, confessing your sins to one another, and that's talking about being vulnerable. So in these conversations, in order to forgive one another, we have to be vulnerable. So you have to be bold, but also vulnerable, have that combination. And I'm not an expert in this, like I said, so it's just, that's what James is talking about, be vulnerable. Uh, so what do you think of when I say the word counseling, professional counseling? Does that make you feel like, ooh, like there are certain topics here in our culture, American culture, 
Mexican culture, Valley culture, uh, U.S. nation culture, certain topics that are taboo or that are kind of like, oh, we have to be very careful with these topics. They're, they're touchy topics. Um, I believe uh, this is one of them. So professional counseling is one of them. But if you think of it this way, this is another training I went to that I'm going to bring in. Let's say uh, it was on mental health. So let's say you're in a car and then you're in a car accident and you break your arm and you're bleeding. What do you normally do? The EMS shows up, they take you to the hospital, they see you're bleeding out and then they fix the arm, right? And they don't try to fix other parts of the body. They, they check you out, but then they fix the arm. Well, uh, what professional counseling is and mental health, because we have different types of health. We have our spiritual health, we have our physical health, we have our emotional health, and we have our uh, mental health. And God made us so complex. Uh, you can't just simplify anything. So what professional counseling is, it's when you're bleeding out, but it's emotionally or mentally. And a professional counselor is trained to help you to heal. And that's all it is. So they're, helped, they're helping you to heal. That's what it is. So it's not, it shouldn't be a taboo thing. It should be like, of course, you go see a professional counselor. And that's with uh, mental health, and that's with marriage, uh, family counseling. And how does that connect to critical conversations and to restoring peace? Well, sometimes we can't just let it go. Sometimes we get stuck, and sometimes maybe we're anxious, or we have all these things. So in order to be able to pray and uh, depend on Jesus, and in order to be able to forgive, sometimes we need professional counseling. Uh, in the past, I've been to a counseling session, and uh, I'll, I tend to overshare, but I'll try not to overshare. I'll just kind of give you a little bit, okay? Uh, I'm too vulnerable. I know some of y'all that know me, you're like, yeah, you overshare. That's too much. Uh, so I went, and I was like, you know, what is this counseling thing? How's it going to help me? Whatever. I have no problems. I'm good. And then we started talking, and then I was, I just, things just came out. I was just talking and working through things. And then the counselor is like, why don't you, I have this chair. Why don't you, why don't you, pretend this person that you have hurt feelings towards is right here sitting in the chair and you can tell them anything you want and I was like really like I can say anything I want and they're not gonna come back and say anything and she and the counselor's like yes like whatever you want so I'm like oh, crying like all this stuff came out but you know what after that it's like I let it go it was gone and it felt great so that's my experience with counseling uh, but yeah, I want to encourage you. Like, that's part of, if it's part of your health, like physical health, you eat right, you work out, yeah, you're going to be healthy. Uh, emotionally and then mentally, you go see a professional counselor, you pray, you talk, you get help, you're going to be emotionally healthier and, get, and you can heal. Uh, and then, let's see, it's spiritual, physical, I always forget these, mental, and then emotional as well. So all of those. So my point is, get the help that you need. If you need help, ask for help as well. Okay, uh, we'll move on to the next one. Pray. Uh, this is something I learned recently as well. So instead of trying to solve all these problems, first pray. Stop. Stop and pray. And I've mentioned that before to the church. Always pray. In 2 Chronicles 7, 14, it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. So uh, usually society teaches us to depend on ourselves, right? Oh, at age 18, you move out. Go, get a job. Depend on yourself. I'm, I'm going to stop feeding you at that age. That's what I heard. Uh, but that's usually our culture is like, go figure it out on your own. But God says, no, if my people will turn to me and pray, because God is there. He's waiting for us. So he wants us to pray to him. I think about my kids, whenever one of my kids, they usually both do this, but whenever one of them is crying and they just need to be consoled, maybe they're crying because their brother hit them or something, I go in there as a parent and I just hold them and I help them to calm down because there's sometimes when they're crying and they just lose control, but I tell them it's okay. Like I just pat them, I hold them, it's okay, calm down, it's going to be okay. But that's what God does for you when you pray. He's holding you, he's patting you on the back, telling you it's going to be okay. 
And this is a creator. He knows it's going to be okay, so we can trust him. All right, next slide. This is an important one. All right, and it's very complicated. You ready? Speak. Uh, there was uh, another brother that said this in front of church. He was preaching, and someone was asking him. He was talking about a counseling session that he had with someone. And they're like, man, I, ha I have all these hurt feelings towards this brother or sister, but I don't know how to tell them. And he's like, you know what? You should say it in English. <laughs> and then they're like, what? He's like, yeah, just say it. Um, or say it in Spanish, but say it. So speak. Matthew 18, verses 15 to 16. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you. That, very, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. So the next step is to go and speak to the person. Uh, one of the things about our culture, especially here in the valley, is that we don't talk about things. And uh, usually it's like, oh, all these things are going on. And there's an understanding that we don't talk about it. But this is important. This is Jesus that I'm quoting, and he's saying, go and talk to them. Yes. Also, uh, speak the truth in love. So whenever you share what's going on, it, let's say someone hurt your feelings. You actually say, you hurt my feelings when you said, and then you fill in the blank. Or you hurt my feelings when you did this, this, and this. So you're just going to share, this is what hurt my feelings. Uh, there was a book I read, and I, I was like trying to remember which book it was, but I can't remember. But what the point of the book was that usually when you get really mad at someone or when you get defensive, it's because they hurt you. So you feel hurt first, and then you get angry. You feel hurt first, and then you get defensive. So that's something to think about. And that's why uh, it's important to go and think about, okay, wh what am I feeling? Uh, what are the reasons? And then you can talk, speak, tell that person, this is uh, how you hurt my feelings. Amen? Amen? Another quote, to be unclear is to be unkind. So it's better to err on the side of maybe being too clear than to hold back and not say, because how is that person going to know what you're feeling? How are they supposed to know how you hurt their feelings if you don't tell them? And uh, critical conversations is something that it's not all like rainbows and lollipops and ponies. You know, it's, it's going to feel uncomfortable at first, but then once you work it out, everything's good. You build intimacy. All right, the next slide is listen. That's the next point, listen. So some listening skills. We'll read the scripture first. Matthew 18, uh, again, 15 to 16. It, it talks about uh, talking to one another, right? So while you're talking and following the scripture of Matthew 18, you want to listen and listening skills. So some of the uh, listening skills are you can look the person in the eye so that they know you're listening. You're going to repeat what they just told you. That way you know for sure you got it right. Because sometimes they'll tell you something and then you repeat it back and they'll tell you, no, 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 that's not what I meant. And then you just kind of go back and forth like until you get that clear message. Yep. Let me, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this part. This is one of the hard parts to say. Okay. Uh, if you have problems with feeling feelings, emotions, if you're someone that's disconnected from your emotions, if your spouse is telling you you're disconnected from your emotions, then it's going to be difficult to have these conversations. It's going to be difficult to empathize with people. It's going to be difficult to sympathize with people. And so that's just, I guess, a caveat, you know, to all of this. First, we have to get to know ourselves, and then we can get to know our neighbors. Jesus was so good at these listening skills. Whenever, the, whenever Lazarus had died and everyone was telling him what happened. He was listening. He, he wept when Lazarus died. Like he, he was good at connecting. He was so tuned in to his emotions and other people's feelings as well. 
He didn't go in like a God that was untouchable, that was unrelatable. No, he related to us, and he wept with his brothers and sisters when Lazarus died. He understood the shock that the Samaritan woman felt at the well because she was shocked that a Jew would speak to a Samaritan. That just wasn't done back then. But he understood, and then he felt he helped her to feel at ease and told her about everything that she had done to build that relationship. And then after that, she went and shared it with the whole town, and then they all believed in him. Mary and Martha, when Martha was cooking and getting the house ready, uh, Jesus went in there, and he understood the anxiety that Martha was feeling, because Martha was feeling anxiety. She was trying to get all the, the food ready, clean the house, get everything prepared. But Mary was there with Jesus, and uh, Jesus understood what was going on, but he told Mary, you have chosen what's greater. And he told Mary and Martha, Mary has chosen what's greater. So he connects with people. He understands when you're feeling anxious. He understands when you're weeping, when, when you were sad. He understands everything. And he was so good at listening to people. He was so connected to his emotions. When he went to the Mount of Olives and he was crying to God, and he knew what had to happen, but he was just sharing his feelings with God. So that's another practical thing we can do when we pray. Just share your feelings with God. You can write them down in a journal. This is how I'm feeling. This is, this is how I'm hurt. All of those things help you to let things go. Amen? All right. Next point is to apologize. Uh, Ephesians 4.26. Go ahead and move to the next slide, please. There we go. And do not sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. So again, I am not an expert in this. I haven't mastered this skill, and I don't think I ever will because I'm a sinful man. So every time that I think I'm doing well, then boom, you know, I hit a bump on the road. Um, so, but what God is saying is if you get angry, you know, take a step back, listen, pray, get ready to talk to your brother and sister. Have peace with one another. That's what's important. Okay, here's another one. Uh, I've learned this one by making this mistake. Uh, whenever you apologize to someone, because we're talking about apologizing, don't make excuses for yourself. Don't be like, I'm sorry, but you don't understand. This is what was going on. You know, just say, I'm sorry. Make, make sure it's a genuine, sincere apology. Like, man, I really hurt your feelings. I'm sorry. You know, it's my bad. I won't do that again. And then you kind of go from there. Amen? All right. Uh, the next one. Here's another touchy one. And I had to pray a lot before I spoke to the church on these things because, you know, just touchy subjects. Avoid gossip. Go to the next one. Next slide. Proverbs 11, verse 12. Let me read it from here. Uh, or I, I have, uh, let's see. Go to the next slide. Post it on there. Or maybe I didn't have it on there. Okay, I'm just going to read it from my notes. It is foolish to belittle one's neighbor. A sensible person keeps quiet. So in this version of the Bible, it says it's foolish to belittle one's neighbor. So how are we capable of belittling somebody else? The only way that we can belittle someone that's when you push someone down is if we put ourselves above them so if we think we're superior to them and a lot of times we don't even realize we do these things so it takes a friend it takes a neighbor to tell us like hey you're being too prideful here so do not belittle your neighbor in matthew 18 verses 15 to 16, I underline the word alone, because Jesus says, okay, you have these feelings, you need to talk about this critical conversation with someone, but he says, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone, that's what he says, so we're not going to try to involve other people, and once you get to a point where you feel like, okay, I can have these conversations, then you can go and have them alone. Okay. Uh, next slide. 
seek advice. So there are times when you need to seek advice. It's more important to know who are you going to seek advice from. You don't want to seek advice from someone who maybe they're not doing so well spiritually or they're not doing so well emotionally or maybe they're not doing so well mentally or physically. So that's part of it. You want to seek advice from someone who is not only a mature Christian, but someone who's also doing well in their life so that they can help you. Because if their cup is full, then they can help fill your cup. Amen? All right. So there are times when, when we do need to seek advice. But the idea is that as a church, we grow in this area. So later on, you necessarily won't need to seek advice every time. You'll just be able to have these critical conversations with people. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next slide. Oh, wisdom. I wrote wisdom up there. So something about wisdom. And I heard this quote, this definition of wisdom. Wisdom is knowing what to do in a situation. Because we've all been there where something happens and you're like, oh, no. The alarm's going off. I'm feeling anxious. I don't know what to do. Well, wisdom equips you with the, the spirit. It equips you through the word of God. And then you know what to do. That's wisdom. Uh, an EMT who arrives, you know, to a situation, someone's bleeding out, they know what to do. That's a training. They have that wisdom. So uh, this training is much like that, knowing what to do with these conversations. Okay. All right. The next thing I want to say is keep confidentiality. Proverbs 11, verse 13. A gossip goes around telling secrets, but those who are trustworthy can keep a confidence. So you can kind of close your eyes and think about, oh, these are the people that I trust. They're not going to share whatever I tell them. So there are some people like that, and it's good to have people like that in your life. If you don't have people like that in your life, we need to seek those people in our lives and bring them in so that they can help us. Proverbs 20, verse 19, he who reveals secrets is a constant gossip. Avoid the one who babbles with his lips. So... Uh, Thinking about seeking advice, when someone is going to help you and they are doing well, they're going to pour what, whatever spiritually they have in their cup, they're going to pour that into your life to help you. These people aren't going to go and spread gossip about you. These are people that are going to help you. They're going to keep confidentiality. They love you. They're looking out for you. Those are the people we're talking about. So be wise in that area. <clears throat> Guard your hearts, Proverbs 4, 23. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. So in these critical conversations, guard your heart. Uh, I know sometimes we might hold back, and then it turns into bitterness. That's not what we want. We want to be able to get help and, and seek peace with people. Galatians 6, verse 1. Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by sin... You who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. So be careful not to fall into that same temptation. We want to help one another out, and we don't want to fall deeper into sin. So in uh, thinking about critical conversations, we talked about speaking to your brother or sister, uh, forgiving your brother or sister, praying to God, Jesus is with you, but who allows us to be able to mend relationships? Who gave up their life so that we could have a second chance every time at mending relationships? Um, who created our innermost being so that we can connect to other people? Jesus did. Everything was created through him. And in, in this time, we, we take time to take the cup and take the bread only because of Jesus. We only have this opportunity to mend relationships because of Jesus. Amen? All right, we're going to go ahead and pray for uh, the bread and for the cup. Let's go ahead and bow our heads. God, thank you so much for just a chance to talk to the church about critical conversations and how to mend relationships. Uh, I'm not an expert. I haven't mastered all these things, but I just pray that the message went and touch people's hearts, that they can uh, work on these things. And we're grateful for your son Christ. We want to think about his body that he sacrificed and his blood that he gave up for us. 
and you giving up your only son. And as a man with two sons, I could never do that. And I, I don't even know, I can't imagine what that feels like. But I pray for the church, for everyone here, that if there is something they need to bring up to someone, I pray you help them to prepare, help them to be wise, help us to be wise, help us to prepare. Help us to have these conversations. Uh, we are not of those that shrink back. We are your sons and daughters, and we want to be people in our community that confront issues with one another so that we can build intimacy. We don't want to be backing up and not speaking about things. So uh, we just are so grateful to be here. In Jesus' name, amen.